and welcome to the One Deeper Podcast. My guest this episode is Dr. Nathan Wildman. Dr. Wildman teaches philosophy and logic at the Tilburg School of Humanities and Digital Sciences. He, in this episode, we talk about a lot of things, but mostly we talk about the power of story, the power of myth, and the impact it has on our lives. It's always a lot of fun to talk to Dr. Wildman, and I hope to have many more conversations like this with him again and uh, maybe a little more broad but this time I had a lot of fun talking about story and myth so I hope you enjoy Is it's 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 it, 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 it's great to talk to you, man. It's been yeah. it's been it's been it's been a while. Nice How have you been? Like you know, uh, I'm okay. It's good to see you. I'm okay. I've been I've been ill a, a lot, um, but you know, still kicking. That's the important thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yep. enjoying myself. That's that's yeah. Can't complain. Are, are you are you in Tilburg or are you just I like am. Possibly. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Okay, cool. Man, so. Uh, I know you, obviously, but like you know, the people listening might not know you. Uh, but everyone, everyone, everyone at Tilburg, at least in our cohort, knows you. And uh, yeah, hopefully, that's a good thing. I gotta say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like I think, like, cause we 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 were all like big fans of your uh, of your class, and uh, even from the we, even from the guys this year, I have, I have a couple of friends who started this year, and they're like, it's like the favorite class. So, uh, it's, it, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know like i will confess i have I, I legit just wanted to ask you like i mean like, a couple of questions but mostly i wanted to ask you about um if you could help me understand well let's just get to the philosophy later but, sure okay first of all <laughs> just give me like just give us an introduction about yourself and like you know yeah, so I'm I'm Nathan Wildman. I'm an assistant professor here in the philosophy department at Tilburg. Uh, yeah, man, I do a bunch of random weird stuff. So <laughs> research-wise, I kind of uh, there's the there's the kind of cell that I have in the website and things, but that's not really actually interesting. I kind of I'm interested in a bunch of stuff. I'm really keen to think about how things could have been and still have been. Uh, the same thing and mm -hmm. I'm really interested in truth and fiction I'm really interested in video games and how thinking about video games basically messes up a lot of the ways we've thought about aesthetics and uh, yeah I'm interested in logic you know it's it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be great because I'm interested in all those yeah. things <laughs> <laughs> okay so man, so that's great so like um my like i uh how did you well let, let me ask this bluntly how did you manage to uh earn money being a philosopher yeah. in this day and age that how did you get like how did you start from school and like, how did you end up here yeah so i mean like i i started off so i went to an all boys catholic school um mostly for <laughs> to, to for american football <laughs> reasons like, I don't even know why that's so Yeah, funny, it's, 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 it's kind of good. Uh, yeah, so I, I went to, I, and like, right next to Disneyland. Um, but I was mostly to go play American football. And it yeah. also happened to be, like, a good academic school. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they did was, like, every year we had to have uh, either a religion course or a philosophy course. So when I finished doing high school i was like i want to do something that i think is deep and fundamental and it was either going to be philosophy or physics and i'm not good enough at the math to do the physics <laughs> so i was like cool philosophy <laughs> it is then <laughs> right um, yeah so it's, it's, it, it's worked out okay i think it's been pretty good yeah so you you were um you were in, I, I just i mean obviously i i read your bio and just like you know it, it, it did a bunch of stuff. So you you were at so you you were from the U.S. Yeah, right? yeah, California, like California, right? So you did your did your did your undergrad there, and then what happened after? Yeah, so so I did I I did my undergrad at UC Santa Cruz, 
which is not one of the big kind of University of California schools. And actually, when I was there, I was one of the last few years they had it where it was all pass, no pass, which is kind of the perfect way to study. Because if you don't care, so I'm trying to, I'm trying really hard to stay PG too, so you can monetize it. No, no, you sort of can. You can see, dude, no, dude, okay. All my, all the podcasts, dude, all the podcasts, regardless of who's on, is going to be rated R. So Good. Okay. Sure. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, 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 yeah. UC Santa Cruz, amazing to do the pass, no pass thing. Uh, problem is it, it's, it's, it's not very uh, well known. So I talked to one of my teachers at the time and was like, oh, where, what should I do? I really want to go and do grad school and stuff. And he rightly said, you're going to probably have a problem. So you might look into going to the UK because they have short MA programs. So I applied to Cambridge to do the, the MPhil in philosophy, primarily because they didn't charge to do applications. And they have no quality control because they let me in. <laughs> and then, so I, I, I did the year. It's, it's super cool because it's just one year. You show up, you just write three papers and a thesis and on whatever you want with some advisors. And it's just kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, when I finished, I applied to a bunch of places to do PhDs and, and, and had a few opportunities. But Cambridge, again, further showing that they really literally need to hire new people in their, in their uh, mission and kept me around. And uh, it, was just, it was just an amazing place to live for four years and, and to get to think about ridiculous stuff and talk with wonderful people. And every week I go get dressed up for, for formal hall. I mean, like Cambridge is like ground zero, right? Like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like philosophical ground zero, you know, it's like if philosophy was a, uh, like, how do you say it? If philosophy was, there was an alien, a alien invasion. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> for, for, for analytic philosophy. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 But it's, it was, it was awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I had a wonderful time and learned tons made some absolutely amazing friends um i cannot say enough nice things about it so so okay that's that i mean i have a friend uh, who graduated from cambridge too like he like he was a, he's a doctor like actual doctor not like yeah. one, of, one of our doctors the, the, the ones that <laughs> like, you know like if you're on the plane that you actually want to have not one like me yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> And yeah, he, he basically said he had the same experience. Like, it, it's, it's a great place to like. Um, it was fun. Yeah, like, yeah, actually, I you know I do want to check out a place like Cambridge or like Oxford just to just to go there because I haven't been somewhere like old in the bones. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like uh, Purdue is like I mean amazing. Purdue is amazing. Kilburg is really amazing too. But like, it's like different kind of you, thing. You yeah. feel that yeah. <laughs> different, 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 different feel. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely want to well, definitely want to check that check that out. Um, okay, so what did you what did you do for your PhD? What was the what was the uh, focus? Of? Yeah, so the the topic the topic is is what what we call essential properties. So the idea is okay, you know, it seems plausible that possibly you could be taller than you are, or possibly you could be shorter, but could you have been like a parsnip? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, could so so? It seems like we kind of lose our grip on Idesh when when we start thinking about like, oh, there's him, but he's a parsnip, or oh, there's him, but mm -hmm. he's uh, a spider, or something like this. So what we're looking for there, are kind of, what are the kind of qualities that we have to have in order to have this very object? Right. So my my thesis was on. Is, is there any way we can kind of give a more robust definition of that? So thinking about it in terms of logic and philosophy of language. And, um, and then, in, so that was the first half. Second half was basically, cool, are there any that satisfy the definition? Any interesting properties? And um, basically the answer for the first part was, yeah, we can give a couple definitions. Some of them are good. Some of them aren't so good. And the answer to the second half was, no, it don't really look like there's very many. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i mean that's 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 so that, that's pretty interesting yeah. so like in like in terms of okay so you 
after that, what, 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 what next? What did you do after your PhD? Yeah, so I got really, really lucky. Um, right after I finished my PhD, I, I had a position at the University of Hamburg. Um, mm -hmm. So I was a Wissenschaftler Mitarbeiter to um, Professor Benjamin Schneider, who was there at the time. And it was awesome. Uh, just a really good, really clever group of people. And it was a kind of setup where, you know, I had a decent amount of teaching, but I had funding and my own office and plenty of kind of just like space to do whatever research I was really interested in. So I was in, I was in Hamburg for just shy of six years. And in the process of being there, um, my partner came over and she, she also got a little temporary job there in Hamburg and then ended up getting a job in uh, the University of Stirling in Scotland. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about it. We decided it would be best for me to give up the job in Hamburg and I was moving just to, to go hang out in Scotland. It's going to be, you know, living on this, not living on the street, but, you know, being a, 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 a kind of aspiring philosopher who spends too much time in the pub. And, um, but literally on the, on the way, uh, maybe like two or three days actually before I moved, um, got a call from, from somebody at the university of Glasgow, someone there had left, they needed somebody to fill in really quickly. They had heard I was going to be around. So I ended up getting this great job in Glasgow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's crazy. And, um, yeah, so we, we were in Scotland for, um, about a year and a half. And during that time, my partner got her position here. She's also in the philosophy department. Right. Okay. And um, again, we kind of talked a little bit about it. We thought, well, look, it's just going to be good if, if we're, we're based in Tilburg. It's kind of nicer, longer term prospects. So again, gave up the job in Glasgow, moved here. And just further luck, uh, they were like, oh, you know, there's, there's this, this idiot sitting around. He can teach some things. Let's hire him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's basically just been kind of continually falling upwards, which is great. <laughs> so, so, wait, this is interesting. So what do two philosophers in a relationship talk about? Ooh. Like, what do you guys do? Yeah. I mean, what, like, like, what do you guys do when you're hanging out? Oh, God. Uh, well, just to, in case in case none of my colleagues are there, we definitely don't talk about other people in the department. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't do that. <laughs> or students as well. We never do that. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, never to do be that. honest, mostly we talk about our dog. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, or, you know, like, whose turn it is to make dinner. And how it's always my turn, and I'm not doing it. Um, so okay, so I want to make I want to make crucial uh, observations, sure. here, right? Like, like um, I don't know how this relates, but it's it, 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 it's interesting, right? Like you know, on your day to day life, you're gonna make these make have these conversations, right? Yeah. Like like who's gonna do the cooking? Like what who's gonna do the dishes? Like what what's a, like why is the why are the lights not working? Blah blah blah, <laughs> right? Like, like while at the same time you have to sit down at some point and think, man, you think about like really like like other questions. Yes. Like, I, so it's hard to say like they are less important or more important than the questions which you have to answer, right? Yeah. I actually made this. I actually made this point to Andre. I don't know if you know him from my cohort. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I told him. You know, it took like it took a million billions of years of evolution and thousands of years of human ingenuity to create an environment that wouldn't select out philosophy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you were out in the plains thinking about, uh, like, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what right. categories thinking, these thinking, things let's, let's do some little proofs. Oh, no, I've been eaten by a leopard. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no time. <to> yeah. <laughs> exactly. The leopard so, can like, really appreciate, though, the move I made at line 17. I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> eat my entrails or something, yeah, yeah, like the oh man, so like it's interesting, like you still have to do these things on on a day to day basis so i I've gotten i mean i've I've been interested in philosophy i it's for me as far as I'm concerned it's it's hard to see how most things don't boil down to some form of philosophy in some sense, right, like it's actually weird, 
if you click the first link on Wikipedia over and over and over yeah. again, you actually end, you end up in philosophy. <laughs> eventually, like, right? Yeah, yeah. Eventually. It's, you it's eventually like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of Wikipedia thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it, it, like, it's it's pretty interesting. So, um, but I also want, but I'm mostly interested in, like, how I should figure out how to, how to live, like, how I should make those, how to, like, when you're having that conversation about who should do the dishes, right? Like, I feel like philosophy should, should, like, whatever philosophy should help me make those decisions better. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I'm a very pragmatic person, like, in that sense, right? So, but I also love, like, just pure abstract, just sure, about sure. Things, right. Yeah, so, I, I, so, I, I was I, curious I as, to, that. as to how, how a philosopher, as to, I was curious as to, as to how a philosopher deals with, like, day to day, um, decisions about these things. If you two philosophers who would sit there, like instead of doing the dishes, instead of doing the dishes, you talk about the idea of doing the dishes. Yeah, what are, really, what are dishes? Why, why yeah, do we what? keep them? What are the reasons that we keep them? Why not just leave them dirty? Um, yeah, yeah that, exactly. that and, you know, two euro will get you a cup of coffee. Uh, yeah. yeah, my wife doesn't have the time for that kind of stuff. Um, that's, that, that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I, I, I think you're right in that there's, in the best of all possible worlds, what philosophy is should be something like a guide to a good life or help you some with thinking about how to, how to be the kind of best person that you can be, how to get around in the world. Yeah. That said, I mean, the kinds of things that I'm really interested in are almost always so abstracted that it takes a lot of work to do that reconnecting back to like cool how does how does this help me figure out my day-to-day -day life <laughs> right so let's let, so let me ask about the first thing i want so let's talk about truth truth in fiction yeah right okay so just like i like i i saw that and i was like okay this is something I mean, first of all, what do, what does that mean? Yeah, good. So, I mean, here's a here's a cheap case. Um, is it true that Hermione is the greatest witch of her age? To pick a potentially controversial example for J.K. Rowling is bad. Let's just get that out there. But um, uh, so wait, what's wrong with J.K. Rowling? Uh, there's there's some some issues about her views that, with regards to, uh, to transgender it, stuff. It and, uh, little, as far as I'm concerned, right? As well, I'm concerned. Those books were my childhood. Sure. Like I don't like like none like none of I don't care what 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 the media mill is putting out. I don't <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. Sure, like, no, no. Well, you could like always those books were, separate art from those, artist. You know, that's that's the those, big thing. <laughs> those books were written like I mean, on, honestly, like I, like that, like I. I mean, this is getting bad, right? Like you know, people are like, hey, let's burn philosophers' books because you know, like. Thousands of years ago, this guy owned like owned slaves or like did this. I'm like, dude, people are, you know, what what, what bothers me is this atmosphere of people who conceive of themselves as pure and uh, like perfect, passing judgment on people all around them. I'm like, who the like? Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, are you serious right now? You you telling me like, you did, imagine if the things you thought. When you were 18 years old, were permanent record on the internet. Well, I mean, unfortunately, no. <laughs> I'd be, a, I'd be in a lot of. I'd yeah. Be in oh a yeah. Lot yeah of trouble, no, thank God. Right? Thank God. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, like, no. Anyway, Hermione is no, great. Keep going. But, no, <laughs> maybe we could come back to the truth and fiction because I think this is an important point. But so you, I think you're totally right in criticizing people if they're kind of coming at some of these debates with. A, a holier than thou attitude. I mean, hell, mm -hmm. even you go back to uh, the Gospels and and, and uh, Jesus supposedly saying, you know, let he who's without the, first, the without sin cast the first stone. You know, the, the lesson there isn't isn't meant to be cool. Start throwing I, rocks. No <laughs> yeah. It's meant to be. Oh no, I'm bad too. So I, I think that's that's a that's a good point. But I'm not sure that that necessarily means that we shouldn't be able to judge people. No, no. Like my 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 point is, I think one of the primary reasons or the primary great things about human consciousness is to separate 
to be able to separate the good from the bad, right? To be able to like identify these things are good, these things are bad, and just move on, right? But it's also take, but it takes wisdom to be able to say, you know what, maybe we shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Right. Because that would be that would be that would be preposterous. Like if we ignore everything Aristotle said just because of, of what is something he said about things he said about non Greeks and women. Like we might as well, might as well dispense of entire um, our yeah. entire uh, pretty much everybody's bad, so it's all going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. cool. We're not we're gonna exactly. be sitting around banging rocks together again. No, for sure. We should for sure move on. There's right? a, I mean, but like there's a really cool example here of of someone who, in some sense, is is a is a philosophical hero of mine, and in another sense, he's just a terrible human being. Um, and this is Gottlieb Frege, so he's often okay. credited with effectively inventing something like first order logic so the kind of quantifiers and, and, and thinking about predicates and names and stuff like this and his logical innovations are incredible his work in philosophy of language is really incredible problem he's a huge anti-semite like right. you know he he'd be writing stuff on like uh, on on the the fundamental nature of meaning and the relationship between logic and mathematics in between writing letters to the editor saying you know what are we going to do about all of these people wearing yarmulkes in my village and and, and right right and it, right. it it's an interesting thing because i teach frega occasionally and use a lot of stuff that really kind of stems from him and i do worry or think about like should we also include the, a little thing saying like, yeah, this this guy did these things. Also, he was kind of a bad guy. Is that necessary? Like, should we just 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 address just talk about the ideas in themselves and let the everything else just be like? I'm 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 curious as to what that what what what, what we should do in this situation. I don't know. I think because, there's there's cases to be made for both, right? For kind of both sides there. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Because my because no, my thinking was like we are all fucked up in some yeah. some one, way another, <laughs> like one way or another, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like nobody's like this this idea of like. Oh man, it, you have to be perfectly pure to have any contribution to society. It kind of it's like man, that's a that's a slippery like how far you would you want to untangle that 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 that, that thread? Yeah. Cuz that goes all the way back, right? Like we are all culpable in some some little way to some shitty thing that happened, but that doesn't mean we're not we, we don't contribute value. Yeah. No, I think that's right. And I I yeah. There's a there's a kind of like Nietzsche is a great example. Yeah, yeah. Nietzsche is a great well, example. He, right? He's a weird case because it, it's it's not clear how much of 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 his affiliations with with some pretty bad people was really him or his executors after he passed away. So there's mm. there's a kind of interesting intellectual history there to to unpack. But yeah, certainly he's got kind of connotations and affiliations that do not look good. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, like think about. I mean, okay, so so here's something that people seem to be unable to appreciate: evil people can can care about science. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, right? it's, the, like, it's the meme about like you know someone you hate having one good point kind of thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like I mean, like it's like it's like this this despicable person who you could not who you who probably you cannot stand, yeah. but turns out, oh my God, he loved funding research in AIDS. Like, what are you going to do? Well, I mean, <laughs> like, if, they're, like, if they're real bad, you could see, you finish that joke as you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, like no, you know, like, I, I, I'm fascinated by this idea. Like, uh, like, like, if you're going to, man, and the worst thing is the people who are most of the time passing judgments, like, have done have done fuck all with their lives and they just want to get on get on twitter and and just throw shit and, and see what and see what sticks i mean right? twitter twitter is an amazing thing for that uh oh my god I, i've left that i left social media behind but two years ago I, I cannot be happy so there's a there's a really great paper on this by my friend teen win that's on kind of twitter and gamification and how mm. the very structure of twitter and how it promotes uh, particularly salacious tweets is designed to kind of draw out the hot takes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually remember I I, I wrote a paper on uh, my like I I want like my I I was pretty I was fairly convinced that social media is a threat to democracy as far as I'm concerned. 
right? So I just I, I wrote this paper and I found some research about like the kind of things that spread on Twitter and on Facebook, like false information uh, t- uh, spreads way faster than like truth, like things that get you angry yeah. spreads way faster. Yeah. Like novelty, novelty is a huge, uh, huge, uh, huge motivator. Like things that are novel, even if they're like completely untrue, it's like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Tweet, 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 that's the thing, know? right? It's just the kind of like, whoa, this is crazy. That's the stuff that's gonna gonna get spread. Oh, I mean, like we all just trying to fucking make sense, of, <laughs> make sense, make, make sense of this world, right, man? Like this is complicated, dude. Like when 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 COVID happened, I was just basically like, where the hell are all the adults? Yes. <laughs> like like, it's on me now. That's crazy. Oh no! Oh god! I'm the adults. <laughs> dude, it's it's preposterous. Yeah. I, um, I absolutely preposterous. But anyway, we got distracted. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. About something about How dare we actually talk about, you know, things. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, the, fiction. true, true the fiction. True the fiction. So the, yeah. the idea is, 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 is like, look, um, again, if you take the, the claim, Harry, or Hermione, not, certainly not Harry, Hermione is the greatest witch of her age. Strictly false. Um, arguably, Hermione doesn't exist. Arguably, there aren't any witches, at least in that kind of way. Um, so, but there's a sense in which it, it feels kind of true. And the idea is we'll say, oh, it's true according to the books. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the same way that, oh, is Willem Zay the best football team in the Netherlands? Well, no, obviously not. But according to Nathan, sure. <laughs> you know, it, right. So by adding this kind of according to or in the fiction operator, you can now talk about you know, not not the propositions being true, but true according to. And so then what truth in fiction is, is a broader thing, is cool. What, is, is there any particular kind of entailment relations that govern these in the fiction operators? Um, what actually is true in given fictions? Is it just like what we're explicitly told? Is it some stuff we can infer? Is it some stuff we can kind of bring in? Um, mm. if we have like Sherlock Holmes mentioned in one story and then he's mentioned in another story, what guarantees it's the same character? Is it the same character? Like all of these kinds of questions are all wrapped up with this stuff about truth and fiction. Um, does that right. make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So I mean, this is great. Like, you know, I recently, I like, I think it was, uh, like, it was just in 2019 that I finished the Hobbit mm. and then the Lord of the Rings, right? And um, what, what, like, you know, I just, I just tell you my experience with that, right? When I first read that, when I, when I read that, after I read the book, and and I read the series and it ended, I was, I was distressed. I was, vis- I was like, I was visibly like sad, and I just, I was sad for like two weeks after this, after I finished this whole series because I felt like. My friends were gone. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I read that entire series and I went on this journey with these people and, like, they became... It, unbelievable. Like, my... my how, Like, I was reflecting on how I felt and I was like, this is crazy. I, did, I was just reading a book in my room. How is this... Why is this happening? Yeah, why am I so emotionally invested in, in these things? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, like... And then you... You dive into the rabbit hole of the world that, that, yeah. that that's created. And the arguments people are having about what's true about in, true in this world, like you know, yeah. like no, this never happened. No, this couldn't this couldn't possibly happen. Like look at this, like look at how far um, the the Hobbiton is from uh, yes. from Mercury. Like I'm like what? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> you fall down the like I do this all the time where I'll I'll be like really heavily invested in the lore of a video game, and I'll spend mm-hmm. like too many hours reading silly fan wikipedia pages that are like and yep. this is what's really happening in the world there's something admirable about the the effort there but it's also real close to fan fiction <laughs> real close yeah 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 absolutely absolutely i mean like but the thing is like i mean the world tolkien created is it's so rich yeah Amazing. Like, it's unbelievable. Like so, so what, 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 what strikes me is like it's a virtual reality experience. 
Like, it's immersive. Like, so, yeah. It's super immersive, yeah. right? It's got, it's got it's super immersive and I've never felt like, I mean, I guess it also depends on the kind of person you have. You, you have to be a certain kind of person, right? To be able to like, to be, to get really, to fall into that hole yeah. and just like be dragged in there. Um, I was talking to Wendy about it and I was like, you know, this is kind of like a virtual reality game, you know, but like, it's just like, because when I'm reading it in my mind, I'm imagining these, these things happening, these shapes, these things going on, these people, people saying these things, these voices, right? And um, uh, I don't know where I was going with this, but it's just like a, it, it was just like, a, it's just a, the richness. So something, about, what I'm curious about is, what is it that the, that series rests on, right? That lets people continually draw out more and more stories and fictions and meta like truths about the fictional story yeah. like there's something about there's some there, there's like a there seems to be like a like a limitless vo- a well of just rejuvenative power in that in in something that's in the talking so in the in the like in the in in that lore right yeah in the, in the world so he's created the he somehow built an architecture for the world that that's that's keeping people continuously engaged in it. Yeah. Which is, which is really interesting. I think, I think, so, we'll come back to your, your point there about the, the kind of richness of the Tolkien stuff. I think you're, I, I would agree with you in the, the analogy of, of engaging with a piece of literature and a VR experience as basically being on the same kind of continuum. The mm. way I think about them, they're both broadly fictional. So fiction here, not, not meaning necessarily like has a narrative or, you know, you're going to go pick it up from the bookstore, but fictionally in the sense that the primary mode of engagement is something like make-believing. And the difference here is just the kind of thing you're using to help guide your make-believe. So this is, this is Kendall Walton's view about what's going on when we're engaging with, with uh, games of make-believe. We have these things that are props. And the props could be sentences on a page that are then prompting us to perform certain kinds of acts of maybe mental imaging or just imagining. They might be physical props. For example, I've got my little space marines here. If we're playing mm-hmm. Warhammer 40,000, right, where the kind of physical figures move or, or literally serving as props to help you imagine where the guys are. In VR, I think the props are basically the kind of images and sounds and haptic feedback and things like that, that you're getting. The difference between these experiences isn't really one of, of a difference in kind so much as just degree or maybe a slight variation in the nature of the props involved, but the basic process I think is the same, which nicely explains the kind of similarity of immersiveness that you were describing. Um, so that, right. uh, I really like that view. It's not it's not one that that um, necessarily a lot of people buy. Um, some of them think that VR is is a really distinct kind of thing from engaging with literature. But I I, I think mm-hmm. it's basically on that same spectrum. Yeah, and like it's just you know once I finish you know I I'm yet to start another series because I I feel emotionally exhausted. Sure. Yeah. Like 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 I'm like I'm like I'm I'm I was like, there. So this, I, dude, I've just been reading short stories this whole time like, since, <laughs> since I finished. I've been reading like uh, some of Philip K. Dick's short stories. Amazing, also an amazing. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> like, dude, some of his like his books are like the penultimate truth, and obviously, do Android dreams of electric sheep? And I was like, Phew. like, how, like, like, how, what kind of psych- psychopath yeah. do you have to be to be able to come up with this stuff? Yeah, right? like, there's, there's something kind of weird there, right? You've got to have a weird imagination to be able to get some of that stuff. Yeah, and it's like, you know, like he died like basically penniless and he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't, but now this is like, people are so curious about his work and they, and like there are three movies made after his stuff. It's like, what? So this, like our, like our history with fiction is really something like. It's, it's weird and cool. And I mean, there's, there's, so the, the, the kind of contemporary notion of fiction is arguably something that's fairly recent in development. 
So the, this, this kind of line between fiction and nonfiction is, is very clearly different. That's, that's pretty recent. I mean, that's a couple hundred years old, uh, give or take. <laughs> you know, I'm a philosopher, not a historian. I don't care. <laughs> Empirical <laughs> facts are boring. Um, but yeah. what's, uh, because you have stuff like mythology and um, Thucydides' histories is a great example where he makes up a bunch of stuff about how battles went and what people were thinking in the middle of battles. And in, in modern kind of classifications, you probably would think about it as fiction. But of course, it's taken right. to be the, the foundational text of, of history, which is supposedly a factive kind of exercise. So, yeah. But I, yeah, there's something really it's... fascinating there. I mean, so how long have like how long have we have we been telling? I mean, we probably been telling stories since we since time since the beginning of time. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's that's way back, right? That's that's yeah. something for uh, you know people who are interested in the formation of language to really engage with. But I would think so. That let's that's, talk about yeah. so let's talk about like mythology. So that's like a this kind of like fiction, right? So I've been reading. So I'm re I'm reading a I'm reading a book of uh, Neil Gaiman's book on Norse mythology. Oh yeah. Uh, he don't like it's so sh it's so short and sweet and like uh, like he has that no uh, it's 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 such it's just it's just a fun thing to read when I, yeah. at night before I go to bed and um, and you know what what strikes me about those Norse Norse mythology like those tales is like you would not read these to a child <laughs> no no <laughs> these are like these are horrifying yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm like I'm like holy crap like, it, like this is craziness well the same the same with like Grimm's fairy tales I mean there's a reason oh yeah absolutely you would you <laughs> the would kids get murdered and eaten and all sorts know, of stuff it's, yeah it's insane it's preposterous right yeah but like but uh, I'm so glad that these things are around you know? like 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 just being able to enjoy like a like I, I, I also like. I mean, I, I've been reading fiction stuff. So like, so I'll just give you this, the setting that I was in, right? So, I Sri, Sri Lanka had a br brutal civil war going on for like thirty years, mm -hmm. and it only culminated in like oh nine, yeah. right? And I didn't have any brothers or sisters. It's just just me, and the only way my parents could make sure I didn't like get into trouble. Or like you know something bad happening. It's just like give me like just surround, just give me all the books they could possibly manage. Yeah, go read, right? <laughs> and the, and and just go read. Right? And I was just like, and my dad, you know, like like he. This is the guy who would stay in line with me to get the new Harry Potter books, right? Like at like 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 eight a.m. on a Saturday. Oh. Like like this guy had nothing else to do in his life. He's like he's like God damn it, <laughs> and like you know. But like. Um, I was always just surrounded by these fictions, right, and these books, and I just, I, 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 like, I wouldn't, like, I would not do homework, but I'd be reading, yeah, you know, and so my mom's like, she's like, kind of conflicted, like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I had the same with with family road trips. So um, when I was a kid, between between when I was five and when I was fourteen, we moved every summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we'd always be driving to the next place we're going to live. And um, whenever we were doing that, mom and dad would always try and like, we'd go through the national parks in the U.S. And, and go see places. And I'd be sitting in the back seat with my head buried in a book. Uh, they were both amazed because I didn't get car sick that I would just sit there and like read. And you know, I've been to I've been to the Grand Tetons National Park. I don't remember any of it because I was probably reading Redwall or something like that. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, so like we, you moved every summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty crazy. Um, we moved like yeah. What, how come? Like, what did what did your parents do? Like, if you don't mind me asking. No, yeah, no problem. So my dad is my dad is an engineer. Uh, he's a chemical engineer. Okay. And my mom was, and, and still is, a music teacher. And okay. just sort of by hook and by crook, dad would you know, do some work in a lab and then get promoted or be moved to another bit. And yeah, we just, just started to move. We moved a lot back and forth between California, uh, Tennessee, where I was actually born, and, and Washington. 
uh, Washington State on the West Coast. So we, we kind of make a bit of a weird L. And, um, you know, not always in the same places and never to the same house. <laughs> um, did you, like, did you, like, like, how was the, because, like, you know, the most, I mean, my experience was staying in one place my whole life when I was, sure. in, when I was in school, right? Um, what was, like, your experience, like, just going to different schools all the time? Did it, did it bother you at all or, like, it was totally fun? No, I think it was kind of fun. I, I, yeah. So you get my mom talking about it. She says, oh, it's always great. Whenever we went anywhere, it was like, oh, Nathan needs to get better at math. There's a really great math teacher here. But uh, the big thing for me, actually, was was getting in getting a chance to meet a bunch of new people. And I think it mm -hmm. really helped me become a more personable person. Because right. you kind of have to be, right? Um, right. Because you rock up and you're the weird new kid. And you're like, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm glad that, I'm glad you had that experience. Because there there's, there's plenty of evidence for the, for the opposite experience as well, right? Yeah. Like, like, you know, it's just a, it's just a disaster. But I'm just glad, like, you know, it, it's so weird. It's like the, what's weird about human beings is like you could have the same, same kind of circumstances and end up with two completely different people. Like it's like that's like the worst like experiment. Like wait, how, what the hell? <laughs> little like, little teeny tiny changes and and just exactly poof, yeah, way weird stuff yeah, down weird. the line. It's, so what kind of books like 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 do you read like fiction book now? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Still tons. Like? I still read tons. Um, I still mostly read. This is going to sound really terrible. I still mostly read trash science fiction. So, <laughs> what do we hold on, hold on? I didn't even know that was a thing. What, what is trash? Is in like you know. Um, I can see a pile of them to give away underneath the desk here. So, um, kind of like Del Rey books or uh, Bantam books from the sixties and seventies, which are just like. Oh God, this is badly written and it's kind of sexist and there's not much of a plot, but by God, I'm enjoying this. It, you finish the whole book in an afternoon or something, you know. Oh, right, right. Okay, um, okay, okay. That kind of thing. I read a lot of that, uh, mostly just because it's it's lighthearted and kind of mm -hmm. fun and, and you start to get super familiar with genre tricks. So you start to be like, oh, it's going to be one of these and finish it and be like, I really right, liked right, how it right. played around with this sort of expectation. And, uh, right. I read that. I read a lot of, um, well, not so much. I have a bunch. I don't read them very often, but I have a bunch of old um, pulp detective novels as well. So, All right. Right. You know, it's like, uh, um, what's his name? I read a couple of really nice ones. Um, Oh man, the name is slipping my mind. So, but I mean, the one the one guy that I have, I'm very proud of this. I have all of his um, kind of first Chandler, yeah, Raymond Chandler. That was yeah. actually where Raymond Chandler. Yeah. Yes, that's the one I'm thinking about. So yes. I, I have all of his his first editions from from the UK, um, and yeah, I really love I love the dialogue there. I wish yeah, I was so, like, like like yeah. I wish I was. I it's was so the cool. Characters. They're so cool, right? Yeah. The people are so cool. But um, yeah, I love I love that stuff. And um, a, a, a film recommendation, I I would very much recommend um, the Big Sleep. So it's a it's a cinema version of the Raymond Chandler. I've read book. the Big Sleep, and it's got it's got Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall in it, and it's the dialogue is from the book. It's magic. It's absolute fucking magic. Like, yeah, very much suggest watching. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find them this week. <laughs> but yeah, the big sleep. Yeah, the big. Sleep. It's quality. Did you watch? Um, did you watch um, uh, the one, the new one with Daniel Craig? There's a. Um, oh man. Oh. Uh, yeah, I saw that stuff for it. I mean, no is the answer. The knives yeah. out. Knives yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw the, the knives stuff out. for it. I haven't Dude, seen it yet. Watch it. It's good. You love it. Yeah. It's so good. Nice. It's so good. I like. It was just like a. It was just like a fun, like good fun. Yeah. Good fun movie. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It was good. So that I, I totally mean, the, a, maybe a, a, a more brief way to describe what I read is is sometimes called trash fiction. Which is is the kind of things you tend to get in like airports when you have a long flight and I need to kill twelve hours. 
cool here's your book <laughs> like you don't have to invest much thought it's fun have a good time right 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 so i'm so once i'm done so once i'm done with this norse mythology and stuff i'm, pro- I'm probably gonna jump into uh i've been thinking about reading uh william gibson you heard of yeah yeah, yeah. neuromancer yeah yeah um, yeah, so I'm just, uh, I, I might start that, or, or, or I've been wanting to start, wanting to maybe read the Witcher series, just, you know, because I watched the, I watched the TV show. Yeah, this is something I've really wanted to. I I have it like sitting in Amazon, you know, wish list or something. Uh, yep. I'd like to sit and read them all because I've heard that the books are really cool. Um, I haven't seen the Amazon series. I've played all the games. You might not be surprised. No, 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 sorry, sorry. The, 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 the Netflix series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. sorry. But like, yeah. uh, the Netflix series, I really like the fir- really, I really like the first season. Yeah. Right? And then the second season was just a, I don't like, it felt like I, it was just a complete, it was just, I, I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> right? Like, it's good. It's <laughs> like, quality. Honestly, yeah. Just some no, stuff. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Like, like we from one episode to the next, I'm like, "This makes no goddamn sense, right?" Because there were so many time jumps and like flashbacks, and then I'm like, "Okay, I'm done with this." Sure. But the first season, quality. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably start reading, reading some of those. But like, uh, anyway, we got I got so distracted. Yeah, sorry. The, the, that's thing. the way it goes. <laughs> this, whole, this whole fiction thing. But um, so yeah, sci-fi. You like sci-fi? Like, what kind of like if you had to like say your top, if I had to, if I had to put a, if I put a gun to your head, Ooh. tell me a book. To read. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, hmm. I just read a really weird book that I kind of enjoy. I can't tell if I enjoyed it or hated it. Um, <laughs> which I, I think is okay. kind of a nice thing. So it's called The Employees. The employees. Yeah, by Olga Raven. Um, so it's a it came out I think this year or last year. It's it's a weird little. It's really short. It's maybe like 140 pages. Um, okay. Sci-fi book, all set. The, the the kind of pitch is that it's designed as interviews done by a corporation to assess what's going on on this spaceship. And so all you get is like the, the what the interviews interviewees say. You don't get the interviewers' okay. questions, and you don't kind of have the a narrator in the back telling you what's actually going on. And you have to do a bunch of an inferring and figure out when you've got the same character telling you stuff. And it's mm-hmm. one of those ones exactly as you were saying. Like there's this weird world kind of lurking behind it, and you want to know more right. about it, but the the way it's presented makes that really hard. Um, and I, I, right. I kind of love it and kind of hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that, on the, put that on, the, on the notes. The employees. Um, so, like, so what about, okay. But you, if you think about how much money human beings invest in fiction, yeah, it's a lot. Like yeah. a lot of it, right? Movies, video games, books, TV shows. They're all fi- mostly fictions, right? But like we, the, we can't get, we can't seem to get enough of them. What do you think that's about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why do we engage with fictions? Uh, I I don't know. I think there's going to be a multiplicity of different reasons. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I think some people are engaging with fictions just because they want to have a bit of escapism, move away from whatever's going on with them. When Amanda and I get home and we put on an old episode of Columbo, what we're doing there is basically just like, cool, we don't want to think about real life stuff for, a, for an hour, so we're going to watch Columbo solve some mysteries. Awesome. So escapism is one thing. I, I think... There are also deeper and more useful reasons for engaging in fiction. I think sometimes people want to engage with fiction because it it gives them hope or it gives them kinds of role models. Um, There's a really, to put it in a very broad sense, you might think of kind of broadly educational aspect to fiction. And I think sometimes people engage with fiction explicitly with that idea. 
Mm -hmm. And I, there's other ones too for, this is going to sound kind of silly, but, but effectively culture building. Mm -hmm. So you might have, there's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a heavy handed version of this where maybe state sponsored medias explicitly use fiction and things like this to generate particular kinds of culture. But it, it, that's, that's a heavy handed version. I think more often you have implicit ones where you have stuff, you know, film, TV shows, etc. Because it's fictionalized, it doesn't have to be bound up with a bunch of the hairy details of real life, but it can synthesize and highlight some maybe key commitments that the culture has or would like to have or oh for sure you see the idea like yeah i see that yeah like, like um i mean i i keep going back to the lord of the rings example sure. because it, for some reason like so i've read i've read quite a number of big series so one big, really big series i read was, uh, was a, a, the um the a aragon series yeah um i'm, I'm not sure if it was, yeah so like the um like that was, that series was phenomenal like it's hard to do dragons right, but that series did dragons really well. Like it was something I really enjoyed. Uh, uh, so Harry Harry Potter, the 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 eldest series that from the from the uh, from uh, Aragorn yeah. and Lord of the Rings. Well, those are like the, the three big um, ep epics that I've that that I've got, and, and Harry Potter, sure. obviously, right. Uh, and like I mean, in between of those, I read a bunch of a bunch of bunch of different different things. But sure. in Lord of the Rings, what the thing that struck me the most is like this. The what comes through to me is the power, like just the strength and what it means to be a friend to somebody, and the like what it means to be loyal. Sure, right? Because and I, and it also it added it, it adds something to me like the fact that i know that tolkien was in the war right adds a dimension to that the his writing that kind of like like i i understand that like like in, like in a weird sense mm -hmm. right and so i think sometimes fiction can be more than true right like you know it, it sort of it sort of distills down things that uh that are so true that you won't see it unless you see it like in this way. Yeah, I think I think talking about distilling is a is a good way to think about it, right? It it boils off all of the kind of impurities, either by just simply letting you ignore them, or because it's mm -hmm. fictionalized, you don't have to deal with them or think about it. Like, how is it that that the friends can afford the two apartments that they share on the ridiculous jobs they have? Uh, mm -hmm. don't think about that, just set it aside. You know, yeah. Suspension of disbelief. Um, but yeah, I think that, so the, the Hobbit's a really good one actually for this with the dwarves. So you can read the dwarves as being driven by a, a, a kind of pride, but you can also read them as being driven by something like a sense of duty. Duty mm -hmm. to their ancestors, duty to their way of life, and wanting to yeah like preserve the memory and yeah just way of life that 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 the uh that used to be in the lonely mountain um right and and that leads them to do a bunch of really bad things and stuff that they later regret and most of them die and yada 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 and there's something really good there in the sense of again to use the word you used distillation of of what's good and bad about sticking to duty yeah i mean like th this is the thing right this is what i'm th the one of the things i think about is that like we need these things around like you know even if like you know i think this uh idea of like you know if you look if, if, like when you read lord of the rings like there are parts in the book that just breaks you it's like oh man yeah you know like oh like 
that's just that's just shit. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood. It hurts. And like, it hurts. <laughs> and it hurts. And and then you think about it, and and then for a moment you forget that it's fiction. You're like, oh, yeah. it's, it's just a it's just a story. It didn't actually happen, right? Yeah. But um, so I think about in the, in the sense that like. I don't look. I'm I'm the far, furthest person from, from from having children right now. Like, like I'm like I'm. It's just so far away in, in terms of what, like happening anytime soon. But I think about like how I want to, um, like what kind of early childhood that I want to like, give my kids, right? And I I want these stories and books to be a big part of their life, sure. right? Just so if for, if for no other reason, to, just to have a connection with me. Right, it would be amazing if my kids like were into Lord of the Rings and they like they read it, and we'd have something to share about. Share about, right? For all I know, they could be a bunch of jocks and never read a book in their life. <laughs> <I have one. laughs> you know, like, like, but, 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 like, um, there's this. Uh, so, like, if you think about trying to create fiction with a committee, it almost never works. You know what I mean? Ooh. Like art, like making art, making art, with, art with a commission. You know, like like with, with like a bunch of people trying to make a thing together. I I think I think that's only true if you think about certain types of art. Actually, if we think about most of the kinds of art that I would guess that you and I probably engage with, uh, it, it is a committee. So film, television, film, yes, video games, exactly. all of these yeah. things aren't. I mean, there's the myth of the kind of auteur, right? the one who's doing everything but that's just bs man there's a whole slew of people involved and there has to be um mm -hmm. so i i, I think that the, the kind of single author genius producing the work sort of thing works for certain kinds of things but for a lot like of in stuff, books for sure but like i feel like in books like it's, it's a very like a it it uh it self selects for a kind of that kind of thing. Right? Yeah, that's definitely the, the 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 kind of the way it tends to go, right? Right. But you get you get really so a fun a fun kind of variant in this is like, um, so I, I I really love Umberto Eco, but I cannot read a lick of Italian, so I have mm -hmm. to read everything translated. So there's a sense in which the novels I'm reading are echoes, but also echoes and oh I forgot his name. There's one dude who basically like translated all of his work. Um, call him Tim, <laughs> right? So it's it's sort of yeah. Echo and Tim together, and and it, it, well, it's mostly Echo in a way. Also, the particular word choice and how it goes, and so there there are little weird niche cases. But I, your 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 yeah. big point is right. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, there's a good point about modern fiction like video video games i mean how many like thousands of people yeah. hundreds of people go into making the video yeah. game right like good video game like i played skyrim a few several years ago like elder scrolls man <laughs> that was a trip yeah yeah yeah. that was that was a 90 hour like a, like a journey through yeah it's an like, investment like, right <laughs> it was an investment right man that was a craziness and uh about the story and the and the entire thing was so compelling yeah. i was like damn this is this is really great and um, so like this oh, man i don't know like I, i'm a huge fan i i'm just i'm just a fan sure, no, no, like, no, no. I, 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 like, so, so i i love this stuff. i have to confess i am not a huge fan of skyrim um mm -hmm. i love the elder Scrolls games but my favorite one by far is morrowind it's just okay, absolute yeah. magic because okay, it's one of the few times when I've genuinely been playing and felt like, holy shit, I really am in a different world. Because right, right, you, right. you I, 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 I'm sure you probably played no, it. So that was the precursor to, precursor to Skyrim, right? Uh, precursor to Oblivion. So Oblivion was Oblivion. number so, four. So I, st yeah, I, started, I started on Oblivion, right? right? Yeah. So I, I, played, I played Oblivion um, in on this old computer like that <laughs> i built myself right yeah and it but like like at that time like i remember when i bought that machine uh like that was when nvidia was just releasing its geforce lineup of like you know like of graphics cards yeah and i somehow like like 
begged and moaned my way like please i need this i make i need this oh right? yeah this is then, this is like this is this dude, completes me <laughs> you have no idea like we had the, like my parents had a, my parents had a friend who whose whose job was just buying electronics from singapore yeah and then importing and then bringing it in within, within sri lanka right yeah. and uh let's just not let's just say it wasn't strictly legal but uh, <laughs> you know cuz uh, the certain steps were taken to uh, sure uh, you know to bypass the customs people but i was like you have to get me my computer because <laughs> right? that's, that's the only way i can afford to play this game right so so one fine day i convinced my parents like look here's this stuff that i need please make it happen right and they're like jesus christ okay fine and they and they're like what's this one part it costs like half of the entire cost is like oh yeah that's the graphics card that's the video card yeah, <laughs> Th- yeah that's kind right. of the most important part like if you can it's fine right. if you don't get the rest bring me that <laughs> right so like so i so i waited and this guy showed up on like santa claus one day in my house like boxes of stuff right <laughs> and i was like yes this is happening right and i i spent all weekend putting this computer together and the first thing i did was play oblivion i was like jesus this game is fucking phenomenal nice. and yeah. and then one day i came home and the hard drive had just fried oh no everything was gone oh. and i was like no Are you serious right now? <laughs> oh man, that was, that was the day. You know, those days, you know, no cloud drives. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a disaster. But um, it's crazy, like how 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 invested. But like some people are immune to these things. Like some people don't give a shit about video games or fiction. Yeah. yeah anyway, at all. Like it's really weird. But for the most part, people are like pretty, pretty. Even music is like a fiction, right? Like so, so many songs. Yeah, I think so. Especially if you have, if you have something like a kind of narrative baked into the music. Um, so uh, the the first thing that comes to mind weirdly is like Rush. Rush is really good for this, mm-hmm. where they'll have these weird mm-hmm. stories being told inside the sound and things. So yeah, I think I think it's. Oh yeah, I mean like like rock music has. That has like all kinds of all genres of rock music. I mean, okay, okay, I'm gonna piss some people off. They're like, no, no, no this is not a different. Genre. Like, <laughs> just let it go, right? Yeah. I call it all rock music. Like, if, if it's got an electronic guitar in it, it's, it's rock music. Yes, <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. But let people, you know, do their point. do their you know differentiations. It's whatever. Yeah, it's like yeah, but it's amazing, man. Some of the stories, like, like some, I'll cry, like. I was like um, I don't know you heard the band Breaking Benjamin? Yeah. I don't know if you heard of it. But like their songs, I've loved them. I've loved their songs since I was in high school and they're me like at, at that point and when I was when I was in high school I was just a teenage angst, right? Just angry and teenage. But now it makes way more sense. Now it's like, whoa. <laughs> these songs are crazy. Like these words are preposterous. Like even uh, like like it takes you somewhere right like that's the whole point of fiction it takes you to this to this place it sends you on a trip and then if you're if you're if you're wise enough i think i think i think if you're keen enough and you're actually paying attention and you're reading something that's really good you come back with something when you go there like yeah. you go there you travel this place and you come back with something that you can actually use in your life yeah i think i think that's 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 a kind of ideal right that fiction right maybe should lord be of the rings for lord, yeah but yeah yeah lord of the rings has legit made me a better friend yeah for sure <laughs> like like for sure i'm I, like i really like i i i i like i try to treat people like those the people in that book would treat their friends and i'm like man that's such a high standard but like it's you know that that it means something to say someone to, to say that right yeah No, I think that's it's but weird. But some so, some people some people will read the book and say, "Oh, this book's all about power." Right? Well, so the, I'm like, the nice thing there is it, it that's the kind of thing that there can be lots of different interpretations and there's plenty of room for multiple people to be right. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the So go ahead, yeah. So this is the postmodern conundrum, right? So it is so, it's like it's like it's like every book can be interpreted in 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 any way who's right Well so the nice thing about when we're talking about fictions or when we're talking about art right I don't think there's a problem with saying yeah kind of go nuts interpret it as you want 
there might be some constraints exactly where they're going to come in. That's a debate to be had. But there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with, with interpreting works in lots of different ways. What's problematic, or I think problematic, is when you try and apply the same thing to a concrete reality. And, and that's where we start to run into genuine difficulties. But when it comes to like, dude, what did you think Lord of the Rings was about? What did you get from it? Thinking of that as intrinsically subjective actually seemed kind of right. <laughs> no, it, no, you're completely right. Like, it, like it, it even changed. I mean, the what you get out of it is subjective, even in your own life. Uh, when you come back to it at a different time, right? Like, sometimes I'll read something and I'm like, this is precisely what I need in this moment mm. in my life. Like, like, I can't believe I read this book at this point because it's what I need to hear and like what need, what I need to know, right? It's like it's like um, reading a book and then like for for example, um, like I'm a pretty I'm a, I'm a big fan of Seneca's work, mm -hmm. right? And there was a time like there was a time in my life like you know, not not too long ago, like four years ago, five years ago, I was drinking too much, I was partying too much. I was just a disaster, right? I, but like, you know, it was just a mess, man. I, like, I was in two car crashes, oh, no. right? Like, I almost died in one because I was drunk, mm. right? And I'm like, this is not right. Yeah. Something, something's up. And then, like, I found this little book, uh, Letters from a Stoic. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, what the hell? Like, this is precisely what I need, right? Yeah. And it helped me a lot. I mean, obviously, like, people have, but people have different reactions to different uh, different times, so you're right. Like it, it could be interpreted in, but but I mean that book is hard to misinterpret because sure, like, it tells yeah. you exactly. Cut what it, cut it. But like <laughs> it's cut it on the cover. You know? it, <laughs> yeah, but it, but but like but, but like it's as, as, as an example of um, what you get from a book or a movie or anything. Like yeah, I think like for example, what do you've seen American Psycho? Right? Yeah. Okay, so what do you get get get, get from? <laughs> Uh, Christian Bale really knows how to tone his body. <laughs> oh my god, that's a good-looking dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I, that's such a weird. It's such a weird movie and such a weird book. Um. Part of that is is just kind of coming away thinking. Yeah, I worry how many. Uh, people who are kicking around Wall Street aren't that far off from trying to shove cats into ATMs and, you know, murdering, well, maybe not murdering prostitutes with chainsaws, but maybe. Um, but generally the, the, the kind of, the thought that there are just these people, wherever they're coming from and whatever they're doing, who are so fundamentally disconnected from the world that they don't see other people as people i i don't know there's there's something useful in a way about knowing what they might think like or how they view the world mm -hmm. even if it is absolutely terrifying and even if it may be just a little bit is sort of morally bad for you mm -hmm. um there's a there's a really so, cool debate here about um I mean, this is this is old. This is sort of Plato on on whether we should allow for art and things, and it's like no, we shouldn't because art leads to bad stuff. It instills bad ideas in people, or it exposes them to bad ideas. And there's there's something like American Psycho. I can kind of get get the bite to that argument. <laughs> um, but yeah, right. I don't know. That's that's a ramble, but I hope that was something. No, so so that's interesting. So like, what I got out of that is like, I I watched that movie. I watched that movie so many times. I, I it is one of my favorite movies. Mm. And, and, and Christian Bale is one of my favorite actors. I mean, probably my all time favorite actor. He's that dude is uh, is phenomenal. Yeah, he right? really is. And and um, what I got out of the movie is like, there are parts of that guy that is so much like me, and I'm like, holy shit, that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like, in, like, like, for example, like his rules and like his routines yes. and his like he, things he does. Right, I have so many things like that that keeps me like sane. So I'm like, man, I can't. I, I, I like that's kind of 
crazy. Like you gotta, like, I gotta, I gotta keep that shit in check. You know, like yeah. But I think the nice thing like, is that if you if you're clocking that, like, mm-hmm. then you're probably already not the kind of person that he is. Yeah, exactly. no, no, no. That, no obviously, that that that, that 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 portrayal is an extreme <laughs> thing. But like, but like, uh, it, it really is like what I just said. You know, like um, when you're like imagine like something about the movie that really, really struck struck a chord in me, and I was just like, and I and, and I watched it many times. Um, but yeah, like what you what you said for for sure. Like, you can be uh, sort of stuck in this, stuck in your like. So you basically, I've been thinking a lot, thinking a lot about how you should treat the people around. Sure. You, right. Like in the sense that like, it's computationally easier to te- to treat the people around you as if they're just a, a part of the environment. Sure. You know, and not really like autonomous acting agents who are out, running around doing their own thing, right? But the moment you try to actually get to know someone, you realize how unbelievably weird pe- people are, right? Yeah. They're so like you know, like like in, I, I, in the best way. I mean that in the yeah, the, no, no, I mean no, no, yeah, 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 in the best possible way. Totally right? understand. Because everyone, every, everyone is like so like like if you're really getting to know someone who's genuine in my experience, the more you get to know them, the weirder they yeah, are. It's yeah. like, man, that's, 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 like, that's so strange. Yeah. You know? And that's the most interesting thing. And uh, like, uh, I don't know why, I don't know why, why I brought that up. But, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, that's right. And like, there's, but, yeah. there's, I mean, kind of coming back to the, the thinking about people as just, just, call and response units or things that can be programmed mm-hmm. to do. Say <sighs> something potentially controversial. Sometimes that's not a bad way to think about people. Sometimes mm-hmm. in certain circumstances in very narrow ways. But I mean, this is, this is old school philosophy, thinking about people as ends in themselves versus means. And there are certain contexts where it works better to do it as means. For example, if we're playing football, uh, you know, soccer, football, football, real football, um, <laughs> I might think of you as means because I want to move the ball, so I'm just going to kick it to you. I don't care about you as an end in and of themselves. I just need you to help me move the ball forward. Yeah, so like, like, uh, cu- like I mean, our cultural rules allow us to treat people Sort of like, like think about how difficult it would be to go around your daily life, like buying coffee, getting groceries, like doing doing your stuff. If you had to know personally every single person at an intimate level yeah. that you had, had to do these things. If with, you right? really genuinely taught, like treated the people that you interacted with in those cases in this right. sort of substantive way, and and this isn't to say, this isn't to say we shouldn't think of them as real people, mm-hmm. right? But there's a kind of practic practicality that has to be yeah so like there's like they like they, there's there's real utility in the people filling a certain role right like like it doesn't matter who's behind the counter at the at the grocery store it, all you see is a person like the cashier right you don't see the person's like you don't really you don't really know the person personally right mm, yeah it's an interchangeable role yeah but i think i think you do want to so you got to be kind of careful there about it might be the case that you don't know them as a person. That doesn't mean you shouldn't treat them as a person. No, no, I agree. No, I completely agree. So it's, like, it's not. So, but the thing is, like, they're not the same. It's just an automated arm or something like that. No, no, but like, but like, but like, also like, I mean, there are cultural rules about how you should treat other people, sure, right? Absolutely. Right. Like, I mean, like things things that only a sociopath would like, like <laughs> <Christian Bale> would, <laughs> would would not would not would not would not wouldn't follow. Like, for example, it doesn't matter who's behind the counter at the cashier. I mean, I just don't beat the shit out of people for no reason. Yeah, yeah, and you say right. thank you. And, I mean, even even like the the less the less extreme nice, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you say like yeah, thank you. Nice and and thank if you. they look like yeah. if they look like something's wrong, you might even if it is just a random person, you might be like, "Are, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. Like, I mean, like, like, like it's that's that's the that's kind of thing. Normal human decency. Yeah, basic human decency. I think yeah. is exactly the right yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like even like, so let's say let's say you're in a lecture hall and you're teaching right like it makes things go much smoother if everyone sort of follows what the rule 
but the roles are right. I'm a student, I sit in a certain seat, right? I'm a teacher, I stand here and do the thing, right? It makes the the maneuvering in the situation much easier. Yeah. Like if if I was all of a sudden facing the other, like everyone's facing one direction and I'm sitting in the op- facing the opposite direction, it's like, what's going on here? Yeah. And, <laughs> and like and. I, <laughs> And uh, and the human brain is so good at uh, it's so good at picking it up, right? Like, this is not what's supposed to happen. Interesting. Right? All right. Uh. Yeah. So like, it's so it's it's weird. Like, I, and for the most part, if things are not getting in the way of what it what what we're trying to accomplish, we don't even notice them, right? Yeah. So there there's there's a couple things maybe to be mixed up here. There's there's something like the the things we tend to do are our customs that are actually the things we tend to do because they actually facilitate the activities we're interested in. So like the, Oh, everybody mm. faces the front because it's easier to hear and see what's going on. Um, right. But then there's other customs that aren't obviously or immediately designed to kind of make the relevant activities easier. They're just sort of weird. And this is what we do. Why do we drive on the right rather than on the left in this country? Uh, we just settled it that way, and that's the way they do it. Um, right. It's not like we had to do it that way rather than some other way, right? right. Uh, so, yeah. so like, I'm trying to think. So, 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 fic- so, what's the role in, of fiction, fictional things, in sort of teaching us how to? Because they have been. I mean. We've been using fiction to teach our generations and next generation and like everybody yeah. on how to how we should act in the world, how we should treat people, how we should how we should behave. Um, and you know, like sometimes just by pure chance, some books get super popular. Some books, some books, no one no one's ever heard of. And you know, like this is weird, like feedback loop. It's like okay, this one idea got picked up somewhere and it got propagated and and some chance things happen and now it's super popular and now the idea is super popular, right? So like I'm curious to think, do you think like there's like a mecha- mechanism by which these things propagate? Like say Ooh, Interesting. Um, so when you say these things, what exactly are you after there? So Think about like, a, like okay, think about do- dominant cultural rules. Things that we everyone seems to be okay with, right? I mean, they weren't sort of deterministic, right? It's not like action A led to action B, led to action C, and then now we all now we all do these things, right? Sure. Like some some sometimes something ar- completely arbitrary will happen. Sure. That'll make that'll make certain things more viable than other things. But they don't exist in like a vacuum, right? Like you know, because we have biological things, we have, we have, we have biological requirement needs, and somehow fiction plays this weird role in showing us stuff that aren't re- like that. Yeah. There's something that sometimes some things that I feel are like are, are meta real. Yeah. Like they're more than real, but they and they they take these things through through generations i think i think so so there's a couple different things this kind of ties back to some of the stuff we were talking about a little bit earlier so one role that fiction can play is just to reinforce or restate either explicitly or implicitly what the kind of cultural norms at the time are um mm-hmm. Another one is, and, and this is sort of one of the, the things that sci- science fiction and fantasy can do when, when it's good, it is offer alternatives, sketch out alternatives, show you what they look like, and maybe what, what good or bad could come from taking these alternative paths. Mm-hmm. This, this is something that, call it speculative fiction, to, to, to think of like a broader group. That's something it's really good at, and that's really useful for exactly the kind of thing where you might want to challenge con- the, the the current cultural norms or current setups or things like this. A really cheap one is, um, so it's an entirely arbitrary thing that, that people who are masculine or male looking or, or something like this don't wear skirts. 
Um, but that's something that's not, I mean, hell, you go to Scotland and you have people roaming around in their kilts and, you know, don't want to piss off any of the Scottish listeners, but there's not a whole <laughs> lot of difference there. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, this yeah, is something yeah, yeah. that if you really wanted to, could be pushed against and could be changed. And fiction could serve as a really helpful way to depict what would happen. Oh, hey, nothing would nothing really substantive it's not like the world's gonna fall apart cool maybe this could happen mm -hmm. or you know other way around you have a lot of fictions that do a reinforcing of that kind of cultural norm by including stuff about you know being super macho and this kind of fierce slightly toxic masculinity and stuff like this. you see what i mean yeah yeah i know you so it's like it's It's my my here's my here's where I stand on these things, right? It's like my 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 thinking is that I love these things being around, regardless of what, regardless of who it annoys or who it pisses off, right? Like, I think I think that's like the challenge, right? To be reasonable human beings is to like look at things and be, hey, yeah. you know what? Enough of this, or like, <laughs> and then <laughs> like enough of this, not like little, and a little, a little little more of this, right? Like, like when I read, like for example, like when I read Philip K. Dick's stuff, or even uh, even uh, oh Aldous Huxley, by the mm. way, holy holy crap! You know, like I used to think, I used to, I, I I used to fancy myself a writer, right. right? That I can write. And then you read guys like him, and you're like, Jesus <laughs> Christ! You know, <laughs> like what am I even? Like I'm never gonna write anything again in my sure, life. Yeah, this is preposterous right even like you know talking you, you read these people you're like yeah oh wow okay this is good insane right and like you know, the point i was trying to get to is like you read philip k dick you read, read huxley you, and you think about the worlds that they created yeah a lot, a lot of the stuff you don't want right it's like man i don't want the brave new world scared the shit out of yeah. me yeah and i was like and i was like man this is not out of the realm of possibility like this is not crazy yeah you know and, and that's you don't want that. That's really useful to have that kind of depiction, right? To 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 kind of challenge uh, maybe ways things might be going, or to kind of spur people to ensure we don't end up following certain pathways. I think that's a really useful oh, and helpful thing. Fiction. The man in the high castle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dude. Yeah. Holy shit. I, I so that that oh was such God. a weird book, and I like. I half loved it as I was reading it, and then I remember got like two thirds of the way through it, and I just kind of lost a feel for what was I happening. Didn't even, yeah, I didn't even know it was a book. I I watched the Amazon series. Yeah, I haven't seen the series yet. Uh, I've only seen. Dude, them. you should. It's 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 cool. Yeah. Okay. It's good. <laughs> Very good. Holy crap! I was just like I was just sucked in immediately because I love the, I love that I love I love that alternative like I just thinking about these alternative things like what the hell could have happened yeah 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 like and then and then there's a huge twist and the whole oh my god <laughs> like when 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 science fiction and reality mix yeah. in that way it's it, very it, cool it, it, it's so satisfying yeah. it's so satisfying it's like man this is great agree you know. And uh, like, because uh, it, it's like it's it's like a very subtle acid trip. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sort of, <laughs> it's just like, sort of like, oh, oh, hey. Yeah, because like, because it's, 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 it's like you, you're not tripping so hard that like you know for sure this is not real. But like, so you're like, wait, is it? Like, could this have happened? Oh, like, it's, is it's this finally possible? kicking in. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. It's it's. Like I love, I love fiction. I love fiction like yeah. that, right? And, and that's part of the reason I liked Harry Potter as well. So it's like it's this fantasy, it's this fantasy world, but they're connected to real yeah. things happening in the real world, right? And I was like, oh, that's pretty nice, right? And like, and then there's Lord of the Rings, completely, off, yeah, just totally nowhere detached. near, nowhere, totally way off, but like still sucks you in like yeah. nothing else. Man. It's crazy. It's very cool stuff. Dude, I mean, I, we spent an hour and a half talking about fiction. <laughs> It's totally fine. I'm happy. We can talk about other even, stuff again later, or whatever. Didn't even, didn't even get. I didn't, even, I didn't even get to like. I, I wanted you to, to try to explain Godel, Godel's incompleteness. Oh, that's for next time. Because <laughs> I wanted, I really, because that's. I, I, I remember asking you at the end of your class to like do an extra lecture just to go over that. So really right. quick. I mean, the basic idea is, um, you can get it. You, 
So you get it with a version of like, this sentence is false, mm -hmm. right? So this sentence is false. You have that liar paradox, right? Can't be true. It can't be false. Okay, so what, what Gödel's first proof basically shows is that any system that's strong enough to express arithmetic is going to have a sentence like that. Right. And if we can in fact settle it, so find it one way or the other, then it's going to generate a new sentence that's the exact same problem, just a new sentence. So there's always going to be stuff that we can't settle from the system's perspective, whether it's true or whether it's false. So does this matter? Like how, how does this matter? It matters like, a lot. How does it do to us? I mean, so so okay. one, one thing, one huge upshot is that there can't be a perfectly kind of formalized way to make sense of, of something like everyday natural language and the way that we reason because we can make sense of these kinds of puzzles. We can find ways to, to move around them. There was a lurking program here, David Hilbert's program of, of a kind of formalist view where what we really hoped was we're going to be able to synthesize everything, distill it down, turn it into this beautiful symbolic language that's perfectly clear. And what mm -hmm. the incompleteness stuff shows is there's always going to be stuff that we've left out. And that's, right. that's kind of amazing because it, it, kind of amazing. I mean, it well, <laughs> for one, it's just, just cool in and of itself, but it, it, it means that this maybe dream of I'm going to express everything using my, my logical notation or mathematical notation is a pipe dream. Uh, mm -hmm. We can do lots but we can't do it all. And what we're missing might be really interesting. So that's, that's kind of mm -hmm. the, the long and short. We could talk about it again, though. <laughs> we'll, but we should be able to do this again soon. I mean, like, but I, I, want, I just want to do, like, and I, this, this is great. Like, honestly, yeah, it's, it's such a fun conversation. Super fun, man. And uh, I could talk about this shit all day. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, me too. Anyway, that's what they pay like, me for. <laughs> Man, this, I, I, I'm not even sure what I'm going to title this episode. But like, cause, Everything cause, and nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, but, like, you know, like, uh, I, I've always been, like, a huge fan of, like, I mean, of you, obviously. Oh, Just, like, talking to you is always, it's always fun. And also, this is, like, super, super interesting. Like, I, philosophy slash fiction and, like, everything else we talked about. Yeah, it's fun stuff, man. And, and, and how to... How to how to navigate this world? I mean, these are I think of all these things as tools that we that we use to, that I can use to navigate this world, right? Yeah. Like these conversations, for example, or like like whatever it is that like 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 that's whatever it, whatever that provides me with something some weird perspective of or something new perspective of how to see the world. Yeah, I, it's I, I find that valuable. Yeah, and like. I I, appreciate, I like the challenge of like, do you want do like what kind of world do I want to live in, right? What kind of world do I want to live in? So, but I'm gonna ask you the, one last question to ask everybody. Sure. Right. Two well, it's, it's a two part question. The first part is. <laughs> we'll see like, now the test getting like, harder. <laughs> the, one, the first part is like, what kind of future, like what kind of world, do you think it's like worth running like hell towards? And the other part is, what kind of world do you think we should run as far away from as as fast as possible? Or the, the like you know how I, I'll tell you why I asked this right. I, I adapted this from like a weird like this uh, this uh, self authoring program like this uh, this this, this, write, this writing program mm. that I did a while ago. That basically it's like a it's like a self it's like it's, it's like uh, what's the word when you torture yourself and you find and, and you feel pleasure from it. This is this a word oh, for it. Uh, masochist anyway, or it, sadomasochist. Yeah, it's, it, exactly. It's like this. It's like this long writing program that just like it sucks and you actually hurt like it hurts you it's but true. like over over time it's really good it's for you it's a good pain so, yeah <laughs> like weightlifting yeah. so i was like so I, yeah exactly so i was like so part of the part of the exercise is to write a future that you that that's worth your time yeah. and honorable and fun, something you want to run towards and the other part is putting like to put a fear behind you that says okay that's what i want to run towards this is what the, this is what then i don't want for sure Right. So what, what, give me something. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, so uh, the, 
the first bit, as I understood it, was kind of asking like, where are we going? Where are we probably going? Where would you like us? To yeah. Go? Okay. Or good. Because otherwise, like, I was going to give a real bleak answer, <laughs> which basically no, no, was no, no, like, 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 yeah. I mean, I think, the Deckham is the second part. So I think, I think, with regards to to where I'd love things to go, I mean, uh, I think, I think some of the stuff we, we really need. Well, I would love to be able to address environmental crises and things like this in a much more narrow thing what i'm really keen on is people being much more open and interested to exploring different kinds of art and different ways just to stick with the themes we've been talking about different ways fiction could kind of work how it might come into being um, really thinking about stuff like elaborate like collaborative or interactive fictions um I think that's stuff that would be super cool. That's super narrow, and that's basically Absolutely. just on what we were talking no, about. No, no, no. That's perfect. Like, I would, I, if I would, I was, if I was to add to that, just like, just like to tack on to that, Please. I would just say, I would, I would want a world where like everyone is free to tell their story. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, dude, you know, we have, like, we are all fucked up and weird <laughs> and sad and, and happy and, and, and good. I mean, we're all great in different and ways good and, too. And, and good and bad and great in all several different ways. And we all have this weird experience. This one experience that, that, that we get to have, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, but I, I, I'm not going to go into the whole heaven and rebirth yeah. situation. Like Beyond my uh, pay grade. Ex- <laughs> we have this experience, like, you know, and we we should want to be able to, ex- to, to, to express that and tell our story in whatever way we want to yeah. want to do it, right? And and you know, like I'm just I'm really happy. Like when I was a kid, I learned how to write recently, like recently. So like I have this medium to express myself in like yes. little short stories and poetry and stuff that I write. And it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be that. Just being able to like have a conversation like this and then express your reality. Yeah, you know? I think it's, I, it's hard to not do that. I would. It's really lonely not doing that. <laughs> That's true. I would I would hesitate to call it express your reality, but I know what you mean. I I, I think express your experience. Express my experience. Yeah, I, that's what I mean. But I, I like, agree with that. No, what I what I mean, mean by reality is like okay, so certain things about reality you and I share for sure, like gravity. Let's say, you know, we're pretty consistent on that, right? And like you know, oh man, I'm uh, I'm hovering off the floor right now. You know? Yeah, like <laughs> lo- like 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 laws of physics. <laughs> Like, like, like it's my sense that these, like, there's we we correlate yeah. very strongly in those dimensions, right? But you can't deny that our experience is weirdly unique, right? Like, yeah, even if we have absolutely, absolutely. So the, again, right. the, the the thing I was kind of gently pushing against there was was taking that kind of experiences differ too far. I agree. I agree. I don't know. I agree for sure. Like, if you do that, we have no common common ground to work on. Yeah, and then, and then we have no way to. We might as well be whistling at we, each we, other. <laughs> exactly. We, we have we have we have we have no direction to move. Yeah. Like to have a goal and move towards, right? Um, so, like, whenever I have so when I talk to someone, I'm, I'm trying to like find like uh, a common ground and like a common direction that you would like that you want to move towards and see like you know like can we come to and I like, come to, can we come to a consensus on this? Yeah. Stage, right? Anyway, so. That's something that we want to move towards. What's like, what's a bleak, <clears throat> bleak situation? I mean, I think you? so. So, kind of sticking with the same thing we were literally just talking about. I, I think a really bleak one is one where you have fractional, yeah, fractionalization, and just bits where people don't talk to each other. There is no common ground or refusals to, to try and engage and, and find the ways we can communicate with each other. Um, factionalization uh, where you have pockets of people who are literally in separate pockets that you know, sometimes you talk mm-hmm. about epistemic bubbles and, and things like this like, that's the kind of world I definitely don't want to be involved in yeah true um, I mean that is, it, it's, it's getting harder right no, it, it, like it's weird because there was a time you know you could go to a single source of truth for example yeah. in the world right like you take the New York Times. That's the New York Times, man. Like, fuck. That's you don't put something on there for no reason. Like, or, or, or pick pick ABC, Fox News, or whatever the fuck it is that you yeah. that you that you that you go to, yeah. right? And like, it's hard, man. Like now it's like, who's 
how do you have a sense of this like do you like in, in my sense is that like it's getting harder and harder to sort of like my my faith in the institutions that i used to rely on seems to be crumbling in front of my eyes yeah i think there's a couple different things in, in play there one of them is is just as we start to increase the number of possible information sources it becomes mm-hmm. so much harder to know which ones are trustworthy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not helping you. Starting no, yeah, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, like as as, agree, as more and more. I agree. Oh, there's lots and lots of different things. That's one issue. Another one is is yeah, closely related because we start to have this 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 sort of disparate or potentially disparate sources. Um, you have a, a, an erosion of the notion of expertise. Mm-hmm. So you stop thinking like, oh, this person's an expert, or this is definitely someone who can tell me the right thing because you right, have right. five other voices over here telling you like, oh, no, that dude's wrong. Um, I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, you, you say that because you guys don't know nothing about nothing, and this guy's the expert, but coming back to stuff we no, talked about. No, I completely agree. I mean, like, I come, like from where I'm from, I'm from Sri Lanka, right? Like, yeah. the the very idea of competence has been under under attack for for decades. For, for, I mean, we, Sri Lanka is now currently, currently experiencing the worst economic crisis it's, since independence, oh, I would say. And, and, like, for example, they had to get, like, public schools had to postpone exams because the government couldn't afford paper. <sighs> right? Right? Like, so the idea of competence has been under attack in Sri Lanka because, like you know, this all these people are just like saying, you know, I, anyone can do that. Anyone can be a, anyone can manage the economy. Anyone can be a, 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 like a, a head of like. So the idea, so they take that to the extreme and they put their family members yeah. and their brothers and sisters in power because, like, you know what? Anyone can do it. Who don't need a fucking degree? Oh, to do hey, that, Derek's right? real good at like you know. Balance in the house budget, he'll be able to figure out how the exactly. country works, right? Exactly, exactly. No, that's I, I completely agree with you. That this idea of like being able to look at someone and say, "Hey, okay, look, I know what the fuck I'm talking about." So, like, yeah, like give me, a, give put me in coach. That's it. That's but, a yeah. tough. Anyway, but yeah, that's it. Nice. All right, man. That's 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 been great. I've been trying to keep this to like an hour and <laughs> thirty now because like, it's because it's a it's a good like uh, good uh, look. It's it's a it's a good loop, like a nice little sure. number of time. Anyway, yeah. thank you so much yeah. for joining me today. This has been awesome. Awesome we to do, talk do, with you, definitely do, do, do. <laughs> Maybe next time we can get to get to another topic. Sure, yeah, topic no, no, about, no. Like, Whenever, just like, let me know. But like hour, hour and a half of like fiction. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, man. All right, man. Yeah. I'll see you later. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. I hope you got something out of that. And until next time, I'll see you around.